Hello everybody, welcome back for some more Ratchet and Clank, and there was some texture glitching going on there. I'm a little scared. It's Silent Hill all over again. Oh my god. No, anyway. Uh, welcome back for some more Ratchet and Clank. These guys, oh boy. They got bomb gloves. You know what? I got a bomb glove. Bomb glove too. Bomb glove. Bomb glove. What's that one guy that says his name? Uh, I don't remember. Uh, oh yeah. Bob Dole. Bob Dole. Um, like he starts sleeping. <laughs> to be honest, okay, for anybody who really wants to know, I don't like Family Guy, and I say that a lot because it's true, and uh, yeah. I don't enjoy Family Guy anymore. Like, the older seasons were funny, but these, this new season, you know, these new seasons, I, I haven't really watched them at all because I just feel like they're just too stupid. Too stupid for me to watch. I mean,. I watch a lot of stupid cartoons, you know, considerably by a lot of people stupid. Well, adult cartoons and, well, both adult cartoons and, you know, Cartoon Network cartoons still. I still watch some of those. And some of the older, like, Nicktoons and stuff, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I'm a man for nostalgia, you know. I like my nostalgia stuff. But, I don't know, it just... Nowadays, cartoons nowadays, they just don't really appeal to me as much as they used to. I mean, I watch them still, but I don't really watch TV that much. i kind of just grown out of the fact of just watching TV in the first place. It used to become kind of like a pastime thing, but now, you know, like, I go out, like, I used to, like, go outside and play for a bit and come back inside and watch some TV and then maybe go outside again because sometimes, you know, like a really shitty show would come on, like inside Jimmy's head or something that would come on, you know, and it's like, man, I don't want to watch this shit. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. I am Lord, yeah, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, there's another cartoon right there that I watch. Uh, I've watched that for years upon, you know. When I was a kid, my uncle, uh, he had a lot of DVDs and stuff, and he had South Park on DVD, and he had Beavis and Butthead DVD, you know, DVDs here and there, and stuff like that, and that's kind of how I got into Beavis and Butthead. As I'd, I'd usually go to his house and watch stuff because, you know, he didn't care. I wasn't his kid, so, you know, what's it matter, right? My parents, on the other hand, didn't like the fact of me actually watching Adult Swim cartoons. Like, for example, like, home movies, when that came on, like, you know, when that came on TV and stuff like that, they wouldn't let me watch that either. Even though that cartoon's not really that bad of a cartoon. Well, I mean, personally, I don't like why. I don't think it's really that good of a show, but, you know, it, it's got its own humor sometimes, but, you know, I don't think it's worthy enough to say it's a South Park. South Park actually used to kind of freak me out from time to time with all its random crap that it would throw out, but then again, it was it was funny, too. It was always funny, and Beast and Butthead was always hilarious, that's for sure. At least I always found them hilarious, and, and they're one of my favorite cartoons to watch. The new season, the, the season that just recently came out, season 9, Oh, I hate to say it, but I don't really feel it anymore. I don't really feel like this is Beavis and Butthead anymore. I mean, yeah, it's the same Beavis and Butthead as we've seen before, but... Butthead sounds more nasally, and so does Beavis. Beavis sounds a little bit different, you know. I know that Beavis and Butthead have changed their... Their, no, their, their voices quite a bit in the past years, especially from, the, like, the older animations. They've really changed. Like, season, like, three or so was when I think they started changing the whole look and design and stuff like that. But they usually change, like, almost every season, but this new season is not really, really that funny. They have funny moments, but they're not really, really that funny. Not like the old ones, and, you know. Yes, I like Beavis and Butthead. And there's also, like I was saying, you know, like, South Park, and there's Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Aqua Teen Hunger Force. That's a good show right there. That, that one's pretty damn funny. Um... I, I, should, I should give you some DVDs of that. That's what I need. A couple DVDs of Aqua Teen Hunger Force. I always liked that, too. You know, I'd usually watch that at my, uh... When I went to spend the night with somebody, you know, and... Of course, nobody would know besides me. But, you know, whatever. I remember when, uh... Never mind. Yeah. I don't know. Actually, hold on. Back up the topic here. I... I always had a problem with, you know... With sleeping in silence, that's always been kind of my problem. I like having a, like a white noise on. I usually leave my fan on when I sleep just because 
it helps me sleep a little bit. You know, everybody has their, their ways of sleeping and stuff like this, and I got mine. You just see my cousin. Uh, I'm not going to mention what his name is, but he has a weird way of putting himself to sleep, too. So, yeah. I'm not saying, like, he jacks off. He probably does. I don't know. But he always had, like, this really odd way of putting himself to sleep, and I don't want him to see this and be like, Hey, it's talking about me! Who knows? I have multiple cousins. I don't know which cousin I'm talking about. I'm probably talking about one that you guys don't even know about. One that I barely probably even talk about. But, you know, whatever, right? But anyway, I could say Hunger Force was always funny. You know, they had Carl and he always die and stuff like that. And I don't know what's with it, but when a character dies constantly in the show, it kind of makes me laugh. You know, it's always like a it's like a running gag, basically. It's what it is! Son of a bitch! Of course I died. I have no health! I really have no health. These guys are starting to get my damn nerves. Okay. I'm trying to, like, whip this stuff out as fast as I can, like Ninja Pro over here. Oh, man, you know, I don't know what's with me all of a sudden, but I can't wait to actually play Ninja Gaiden on this channel. Just to get it on this channel, for one, and just to play it again, because that's a fun game. Well, the first one, yeah, it's fun. I mean, it's... Actually, I had fun with it. Then, you know, comes the second one. The second one, I don't know what's with me about the second one. As much as I like that game, I don't like it. You know, it's like... Yeah, it's better than the first one, by all means. You know, it looks better, it feels better. More weapons, sort of, I think. Just in general, it's a better, faster Ninja Guide than the first one. Easier, but... It's still... He has some challenge in it. And I think on, like, Master Ninja mode, there's usually, like, enemies that are really cheap enemies. From what I've heard, I've never actually gotten to Master Ninja mode yet, but so far, I don't think that's not, I don't, I don't think that's, like, impossible yet. I mean, I'm not saying, like, I'm going to be, I'm not saying, like, I'm a super pro or anything, but playing on hard on Ninja Gaiden 2 isn't really that difficult, you know. No, it's not God of War easy. It's just, it's really, really simple, and maybe I'm just good. No, I'm kidding. Of course I'm not. I know there's better people out there than me. There's pros out there. I don't know, I don't, I know about pro players, but I don't really watch them. Because it makes me feel like I'm a loser. No, I'm kidding. But there's actually a guy, I don't really, he doesn't really consider himself a pro, and, well, I respect that, you know. I understand. If you beat a game on hard... You, you beat it on hard, you know, but there's usually some games that if you beat on like the hard's difficulty, yeah, you're probably pretty damn good. I mean, now, the older games like Mario and stuff like that, you know, with, without like games without hard mode, you know, they used to consider you a professional back then, but nowadays I don't think if you beat Mario Bros. 1, you're pretty much the best person in the whole world, because I think we've all done that before in our lives. Then there's games like Contra, Dear God Christ. Contra games. And, you know, we all know how that goes. What, like three lives and one hit? Bullshit! Well, then again, there's a Konami code. But, you know, why, why would you want to? You know, you know what I'm saying? How many Contras are there? There's probably like a lot, isn't there? Like four, I think? I don't know. But one thing for sure is, I don't really care a whole lot about Contra that much. Speaking of older games, I want to play one It I've been dying to play for some reason. It's Castlevania Symphony of the Night. I saw that on PlayStation 1. I'm like, you know what? I should go look for this game and try it out. It looks really fun. And then, you know, I still haven't found anything for it yet, or ROM for that matter. Or have I emulated it yet? Excuse me, sir. I was wondering if you were concerned about the, uh, invasion? Son, our defenses are the best money can buy. Don't give it another thought. You ever been on a hoverboard? Yeah, once or twice. I am in search of a hip young star to represent my newest line of boards. Some of my kids can look up to. Then I am your man. If you can beat my <clears throat> test bots in a race, that job is yours. Okay. So now we're going to enter into another race, and this time, we actually have weapons on the field to use. And by the way, we can actually do tricks now. Whenever you do tricks, you actually gain boost, and this boost will definitely help a lot. So make sure you use quite a bit of it. There is a skill point to earning about uh, a hell lot of points. 
yeah, like, I mean, you gotta get, like, a lot of freaking points. And there's a skill point. I will be doing that in the future. I probably won't do that right now, considering how difficult it can be. Um, it, it can be difficult. Yes, by the way, these are cheap. These things I'm doing. You're supposed to do, like, a Tricky McMarks or something. I forget what how you... I forget how you do it, but... That's another skill point. I think that was probably on... It's either this race or it's the last race we did. You had to do, like, a Tricky McMarks. I think this one... You have to just get, like, a whole bunch of just random different poses! Oh, well, there goes all that, then. Well, I keep my points, but still. Um, there's... I don't think there's any, like, gold bolts on the field, so you don't really need to... God damn it. I don't think you really need to worry about any of that stuff. All I can say right now for you is just beat the race. You know, beat these guys down. Kill them off. Whatever you gotta do. Just beat these guys. Uh, I recommend just, you know, getting the speed boosts, of course. and Taking the ways that are... Well cheap. I think you also... Maybe... No, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this one is beaten in a certain time limit or something. Or is that the first race? I actually don't know. I'm gonna have to go back and look on that one. Because I actually do not remember. On this part right here, make sure you actually have a little bit of boost left in you. Because if you don't have any boost left in you, you won't be able to make this jump right here. Well, I guess you probably could. Maybe we could. I don't know. I don't even care anymore. Just... Roll with it, Ted. No? Okay. I'm kidding. That was a fail attempt at naming somebody who doesn't exist. Just like other people on YouTube. That was terrific! Now I just need you to say a few words about our hot new boards. Huh? Now? Of course. Just look into that camera right over there and say what comes naturally. Rolling! Uh, hi. This is Ratchet for, uh, Gadgetron Hoverboards. And if you, um... Yo, dudes, for the freshest boards in the galaxy, check out the new XZ88 from Gadgetron. It's so hot, it's cool. I think I got the wrong guy. That was... <laughs> something. Hey, I was thinking, do I get a discount on gadgets now? Uh, you have to be with the company for two years before the employee discount kicks in. <laughs> I can, however, let you have this. The Gadgetron Hologize is the perfect infiltration device for all our non-robot customers. Simply equip the device and press the circle button. You will instantly be disguised as a sentry bot, preventing detection by all sentry bot security systems. Press the circle button again to wave at fellow sentry bots, who will then deactivate force fields for you. Caution, use of any weapon while disguised will deactivate the holo guys. Okay. So now we have the holo guys. We're pretty much done with the planet. If you want to get the skill points, again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to come back for those. I'm going to do them in like a post-com video anyway, so that's what I decided on anyway. I, I don't feel like doing it now because I don't remember exactly what that skill point was per se. So, yes, I am a failure. And by the way, these uh, tread pads right here, they'll actually move towards the direction you're going. So they won't actually push you down if you try to go up them. They'll, they'll follow you where you step. We need these. We need these in the future. That's what we need. We need like these kind of escalator things that go where you go, you know? But then wouldn't that kind of screw up everybody because... One person would probably want to go up, and then the other person would want to kind of go down, and then all of a sudden, you know, it would be like a big mess. It would be like clenching together or something. How would that work? Like, would the stairs just stop? Or like they just break into each other or something? I don't know. That would be kind of funny to see. I'd like to see that. But more likely, they probably like some kind of stupid rules of like how to do it. Make sure you put on your seatbelt before you hop on the ride. Uh, of course. There's always some safety rules somewhere. But anyway, now that we got the hollow guys, I recommend putting in your quick slip because it's a pain in the ass to whip out and whip back in. So what we're gonna do is whip out the hollow guys. Um do I even use blaster? Commonly no, but you know, usually I guess I could. Press circle to use it, stand on this pad, wave hello, he'll open the door. And you kind of just kind of get in there and kick his ass. His hands are in the door and... Oh, he's beating up Squidward. <laughs> yeah, you break in here. Oh, shit. 
Um, I think you don't want to get caught, that's the idea. Yeah, getting caught right here ain't gonna be a big deal, but... Still, very dangerous to get caught no matter what. Make sure at all times, in this area specifically, you probably want to wear your uh, hollow guys. Just in case, because, you know, enemies could probably get you. Wave? The skill point is wave the five guys at one time. Five robots at one time. Speaking of five guys, I never actually had that place before. I heard it's pretty good, but I heard it's got a lot of food. Like, a lot of food, from what I've heard. Like, they serve, like, a whole plate of, like, fr freaking french fries or something. I guess. Again, I haven't been there, so I wouldn't know. Now, as soon as they turn around, jump over there. Hello, guys. And you can easily just walk right past them. These guys actually take about three hits to break in. Uh, just whack him again, you know, he'll die off eventually. There you go. See? That's pretty easy. Not too hard. Not too, you know, not too hard. Ah, screw it. Let's attack this guy. You could do like a hyper strike and do about two damage to him. He takes about three damage to kill off anyway. Listen to me sound like I actually know what I'm talking about again. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just talking to my ass, it seems like. Yep, that's just what I do. I think you're supposed to get to this part without getting spot or something. I don't remember. I don't think this one even had a skill point. I don't believe so. I don't know, so I don't know. We have destroyed those sentry bots. Make sure they do not press the alarm bot. Or alarm bot. Alarm button. Switch out to something real quick. Yeah, what sucks? You have to. You have to whack. You have to press square to you know deactivate the hollow guys, and then press your quick select, which won't stop the time. So that means you're pretty much screwed in the pooch. If the enemy or the sentry bot is that close to. Yeah, his destination. I think, um... Why am I glowing red? This is just not right. Hello! How you doing? Funny how the enemies don't even really notice me until, like, after it's too late. Pow! 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 Boom! Chakalaka. Awesome! Killed them guys off. Oh yeah, speaking of which, this is also out of random, um... My friend bought... This game a long time ago. It was One Piece Pirate Warriors 2. Not the first one, but the second one. I played it. I thought it was okay, but it's a One Piece game. I'm not really a big fan of One Piece, or anime for that matter. But recently I kept looking at like a bunch of Hyrule Warriors stuff, and I kind of want to play that game. And after, you know, seeing that game and stuff, Makes me want to play some Dynasty Warrior based games. And so, since with my new PlayStation 3, I'm downloading that as of right now. So maybe in the future, you might even see a co op of that game. But the problem with that goddamn game, for one, it's too confusing. I don't know, I found like the whole skill tree thing was a little confusing for me. I didn't get it, you know, there's like you level up these coins or something and you. Yeah, I have no idea. It beats me. Funny how that guy's just standing his back towards the swing, the swing shot over here, so I can just take him out easily. Then you could actually um transform right about. Nope! Shit! That found me. That found me. Well, at least there's a whole bunch of bolts in here, too. Wow, dang. Yeah, you start to notice how many bolts you start to pick up better because. Yeah. Like I said, you know, there might be a Borderlands co op. That would be great to do. Borderlands is a fun game. Again, I wouldn't mind doing a whole less play by myself. But the thing is, I'd rather do it with somebody, you know. I'd rather just have somebody to do it with because Borderlands is not fun if you're by yourself. I mean, it's enjoyable by yourself, but, you know, I, I, I like playing games by myself. But still, it's always better co-op. It's always better co-op. I always have somebody behind your back, you know. You never know. You could die, and that could screw you up. It's funny how, like, he's not even near a button that could possibly turn off that force field. You just wave hi to him, and, like, the force field just turns off. Genius intent. That should do it. Mom? Oh, brother. I tried, Mom. I know. 
Hey, look! A sister! My fellow blog. Our synthetic world is now fully functional and ready for habitation. However, there is one small obstacle in our way. This pathetic lump of a planet. Due to some blunder of fate, it happens to occupy the galaxy's most perfect orbit. But no more. Behold, the Deplanetizer! The most powerful laser ever created! Soon, we'll move the Deplanetizer into place just above the planet's surface. I will, of course, be on hand to press the button that will blow this mud ball to smithereens. No one will even miss it. See you then! Ratchet, are you all right? He is going to pay! Excuse me? It shouldn't have taken me this long to see it. Drek is going to find out what happens when you mess with my home. What are you smiling at? This is the ratchet I always knew was there. Okay, if we're gonna do this, we need to get on to Drek's ship. And then we can find out where he set up that laser. I will try to make you proud, Mom. <laughs> okay, so I don't know exactly where, where these things even come from. Where do these robots even come from? Makes no sense. There's a swing shot in this room. Right over here. Come up here and you get a go bolt. So, yeah. Don't forget that's there, ladies and gentlemen. You do have a map on Manic, by the way, so you should be able to find it. But still, um, I thought there was actually supposed to be a, a flagship we go to next. Instead, I guess we're going to Velden. Velden right away. Okay, I'm like totally confused right now. There should be like another planet we go to. At least I would have thought. Maybe I'm just an idiot. Well, that tends to happen quite a bit. I probably missed an infobot. That's another thing. I always tend to miss an infobot or something. Well, about fell off there. Well, let's go look real quick. And something's not right here. Unless that's not the all oh, Drex fleet developed in orbit. So yeah, this should be the, the last of the fleets too. So anyway, guys, without further ado, I hope you all enjoyed, and we'll see you next time when we play some more Ratchet and Clank. But in the next episode, I'm probably gonna go back and use my Mathematic to find some gold bolts we missed, and then from then on, we should be fine. So as always, take care, everybody. <laughs>